Hello and welcome. Hope your Friday is off to a great start. This is Daniel Che for Arirang News. Let's start with the headlines. To counter the effects of MERS combat the ongoing drought and to prevent a dip in consumer spending, the government plans to inject more than $19 billion to stabilize the economy and improve the livelihoods of the Korean people. The IMF unveiled a detailed review of Greece's debt sustainability that could influence Sunday's referendum. It seems to support the Greek Prime Minister Alexis Tsipras' demands to the Eurozone ministers. In Korea, a growing number of MERS patients are discharged from hospitals after fully recovering. As of Friday, the number of living MERS patients that have contracted the virus through secondary infection stands at zero. Korea has unveiled a multi-billion dollar supplementary budget plan designed to help the country deal with the fallout from the MERS outbreak and the ongoing drought. The government will hand the budget to the National Assembly next Monday. Our Shin Se-min starts us off. The Korean government will inject 19.6 billion U.S. dollars worth of stimulus funds into the flagging economy in the second half of the year as it aims to hold the country's economic growth rate in the 3 percent range. Of that, $10.5 billion of supplementary budget has been set aside to deal with Korea's most pressing issues. The extra budget should help stabilize the livelihoods of ordinary people who have been affected the most by the MERS outbreak and to prevent a sharp drop in consumer spending. From the supplementary budget, $5.5 billion will directly go to counter losses from the MERS outbreak and the ongoing drought. And the remaining amount will cover tax revenue shortfalls for this year caused by the slowing economy. The timing and amount of the budget seem sufficient to quickly put the economy back on the recovery track, as its role is to deal with the most pressing matters. The extra spending is estimated to raise the economic growth rate by 0.3 percentage points this year and 0.4 in 2016. Still, concerns linger over the country's fiscal soundness as the finance ministry plans to sell $8.5 billion worth of new Treasury bonds to fund the extra budget. By issuing new Treasury bonds, Korea's fiscal soundness may be damaged and potentially drag down the economy, as the country will have to pay back years later. The extra expenditure will raise the government debt to 37.5 percent of GDP this year, up nearly two percentage points from last year. Experts also point out that it's critical for the country's government to push through its structural reform efforts on top of the extra budget to help sustain the country's economic growth in the long run. Shin Se-min, Arirang News. Putting the ongoing internal disputes in respective parties on hold, the delayed House Steering Committee meeting involving the ruling Senate Party and the opposition NPAD and secretaries from the presidential office of Chang Wadae got underway this Friday. Our Park Ji-won has more on this tense encounter between ruling party floor leaders and presidential officials. Embattled ruling party's floor leader using me and chaired Friday's House Steering Committee meeting session to oversee the presidential secretariat. The meeting adopts the budget settlement on the presidential secretariat's closing accounts for the 2014 fiscal year. It was the first encounter between the floor leader and presidential chief of staff Lee byung since President Park Geun-hye vetoed a controversial revision of the National Assembly Act last week. At that time, President Park harshly criticized you, and since then, the floor leader has been facing mounting pressure within the party to resign. This first encounter, however, was not as tense as many anticipated. Presidential Chief of Staff E did not mention any comment on whether you should resign or not, and rather he urged the Assembly's cooperation on the supplementary budget bill. The supplementary budget plan was approved during today's cabinet meeting, and it will be submitted to the Assembly soon. We hope the Assembly passes the budget bill at the earliest possible moment. Meanwhile, the main opposition New Politics Alliance for Democracy heard questions to the president's secretaries over the veto of the bill that would have allowed lawmakers to request revisions to government decrees. The president vetoed the bill on the grounds that it could threaten the constitutional principle of division of powers. But do you have any idea on how other countries' parliaments supervise executive ordinances? 
Opposition lawmakers continued their criticisms of the president's office and how it is exerting influence over the National Assembly by pressing the ruling party's floor leader to step down. In response, Chief of Staff Lee stressed that the president's office has never looked down on the parliament. Park Ji-won, Arirang News. Some updates on the bus crash in China that killed 10 Korean nationals and a Chinese driver. Victims' families are now arriving in the northeastern Chinese city of Jian, site of the accident. According to our Kim Min-ji, CCTV footage recorded at the scene has been released, hopefully providing some clues as to what caused that accident. Bereaved family members are arriving at a funeral hall in the Chinese city of Jian, set up for 10 Koreans who were killed in a bus crash earlier this week. They will meet with the Korean government's emergency response team dispatched to the area to discuss how to transfer the bodies back to Korea, as well as compensation and other related issues regarding the accident. The wounded have been moved to a hospital in northeast China's Jilin province to receive intense treatment. Local doctors say among the 16 injured, one is in critical condition, while seven are seriously wounded. The victims were among Korean government employees who were on a training trip to China. The Korean consulate in Shenyang has set up a situation room in a hotel in the province to help deal with the aftermath of the accident. China is disturbed about this accident and doing its best to find the exact cause. Although an investigation is currently underway, witnesses are pointing to driver error as the cause of the accident. CCTV footage shows the bus making a sharp turn and crashing into a pier before eventually veering off the bridge. Chinese officials say it may have been caused by driver inexperience, but have not ruled out other possible causes, including mechanical errors. Eleven people were killed after a bus carrying 28 people veered off a bridge and plunged 15 meters into a river in the city of Jian on Wednesday. Kim Min-ji, Arirang News. There was another deadly incident in Korea this morning. An explosion at Hanwha Chemical Plant claimed six lives. Officials from the fire department said the accident happened at around 9.16 a.m. at one of Hanwha's factories in the southern city of Ulsan when a storage tank containing a factory waste suddenly exploded. The blast reportedly killed six workers at the site and injured a security worker surnamed Che. Later, officials from Hanwha Chemicals said they suspect the accident occurred while the workers were welding the tank. A spark from the construction work ignited the gas. Hanwha apologized and offered compensation to the victims' families, adding that they will do their best to prevent similar accidents in the future. Moving on to the latest on the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome or MERS outbreak in Korea. Health authorities say more than a dozen patients have recovered from the virus. This, along with other factors, hints at improvements in the current situation on many levels. Our Kim ji explains. The health ministry says Friday, 25 people who have contracted MERS from secondary infection have fully recovered from the virus. Only five MERS patients who had contracted the virus due to close contact with the country's first confirmed patient have died. With this, the country no longer has a living MERS patient that have contracted the virus through secondary infection, which occurs through a direct or close contact with the first confirmed patient. It's seen as a major achievement in how the country is handling the outbreak break and containing further spreading. Among those recovered were an active source of tertiary infection called super spreaders that spreaded the virus to other regions. For example, patient 14 infected more than 80 people at the Samsung Medical Center in southern Seoul after he himself contracted the virus from the first confirmed patient in Pyeongtaek. Patient 14 and 24 others are receiving medical treatment in a general ward or have already been discharged from hospitals, putting weight on the perspective that an infection isn't necessarily deadly and that it can be treated. The second confirmed patient, the wife of the first confirmed patient, recovered from the virus 41 days after contracting the virus. So far, at least 109 people have been discharged from hospitals as they recover from the virus, while nearly 1,500 people have been released from quarantine or home isolation. Kim Jong, Arirang News. Let's turn our focus to the Greek financial crisis. The International Monetary Fund has sent a strong message to the Eurozone, saying Greece's debt needs to be restructured and cut. The IMF report could have a pivotal impact on Greece's bailout referendum set for Sunday. Our Han Daun tells us why. 
While Greece and Eurozone ministers remain at loggerheads over the terms of Greece's bailout, the International Monetary Fund has taken on a bigger role by releasing a debt sustainability report on Greece. The report, which comes just a few days before Greece's critical referendum, acknowledges that Greece's current debt dynamics are unsustainable and need to be restructured. It says Greece needs between 50 to 60 billion euros of extra funds over the next three years and large-scale debt relief to create a breathing space and stabilize the economy. The agency says Greece shouldn't have to pay any debt repayments for 20 years and final payments should not take place until 2055. The IMF's detailed review also says Greece needs a debt haircut, which would help take some of the burden off the troubled country. The IMF's report is expected to give Greek Prime Minister Alexis Tsipras a major boost, as it's close to what he has been demanding from Eurozone ministers all along. Ordinary Greeks, however, remain confused, worried and divided over the upcoming referendum. While the Greek government is going all out to convince people to vote no, some think otherwise. I am very worried, but I am optimistic. I think that at the last moment, everyone is going to vote yes. It is a difficult choice to vote yes. Things will not be easy at all. However, I can't see a future outside Europe. Some are upset about having the vote itself. Next Monday, the government will either clinch a new, a brutal agreement, or our exit from the euro will start. Whichever of the two happens, it is our people who will go bankrupt. Eurozone ministers have ruled out any bailout talks with Athens until after the referendum. And then, at the news. Korea's foreign exchange reserves have, re have posted another record high for the third consecutive month. The Bank of Korea says the country's forex reserves stood at 374 billion U.S. dollars as of the end of June, up about $3 billion on month. The central bank also says the surge is due to the appreciated value of other currencies, with the euro gaining 2.2 percent against the greenback and the British pound up by 2.7 percent. It also added that the increased profit from asset management contributed to the hike. The size of Korea's foreign exchange reserve ranked sixth in the world in May, with China topping the list, followed by Japan. Korea is vowing to create a sound ground for venture capital investors to open up their wallets for startups. As part of that effort, the government is planning to create a market structure where investors can easily collect their initial funds. Iconic Kim reports. Korea will create a solid startup ecosystem in the nation, making it easy for venture capital fund investors to collect funds. This was the main message from the country's Deputy Prime Minister Che Kyung-hwan on Friday during a creative economy meeting with corporate and government officials. Che pointed out that active venture capital investment is hard in an environment where collecting investment fund is made difficult in the first place. Currently, it's most likely that investors would have to wait for a startup to go public or go through the initial public offering process to earn profits from their initial investment. The government vowed it will focus on vitalizing the intermediate recovery market through active corporate merger and acquisition. Che went on to say that in the new normal of weaker growth, the government's creative economy is the only way for the Korean economy to strive in the global market. The number of venture capital exceeded 30,000 for the first time in May, and the software and big data industries have been growing at an annual 20 to 30 percent rate. As part of efforts to nurture startups, Che said the government will spearhead all efforts to establish by the summer of 2017 the so-called Panyo Creative Economy Valley, also dubbed as a future of Korea's high-tech industry. Connie Kim, Arirang News. In inter-Korean relations, Seoul has dismissed Pyongyang's accusation that South Korea is advocating the deadly naval clash between the two Koreas in the West Sea. South Korea's unification ministry said Friday that Pyongyang should refrain from unreasonably interfering in Seoul's social issues and reflect on its own internal situation. Pyongyang state-run Korean Central Television reported Thursday that South Korea is driving the Korean Peninsula closer to war after Defense Minister Han ming speech on Monday marking the 13th anniversary of the Second Battle of Yeonpyeong, in which he vowed to sternly retaliate against any provocations from the north. 
The U.S. government says it's urging Japan to swiftly resolve the issue of Tokyo's wartime sexual enslavement of women. That's what officials at the U.S. State Department told Kim Bok-dong, a survivor of Japan's wartime sex slavery, during a meeting in Washington on Thursday. Citing a civic activist traveling with Kim, Seoul's Yonhap News Agency reports that the officials expressed hopes for the issue to be resolved and added that President Obama holds a clear stance about the matter. Kim, who is currently on a week-long trip to the United States to raise awareness about the so-called comfort women issue, is one of just 49 surviving victims in Korea. In sports, the largest universiad in history gets underway in just a few hours in Korea's southwestern city of Gwangju, that is. The opening ceremony for the 2015 Gwangju Universiad is scheduled to begin at 7 p.m. Korea time to welcome spectators, officials, and athletes from around the world. This year's Universiad will be the largest in the 56-year history of the sporting event, surpassing the previous record set in the Russian city of Hazan three years ago. Some 13,000 athletes from 145 countries are set to compete in Gwangju. South Korea has sent its largest ever delegation with 516 athletes and officials partaking in all 21 sporting categories. That's it for me. More coming your way at 10 p.m. Korea time. For now, thank you for watching.